Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about subclavian artery Doppler ultrasound. We will be looking at the subclavian artery and mainly its spectral Doppler analysis. On the left we have a normal subclavian artery. This is a normal spectral Doppler waveform of the subclavian artery. The peak systolic velocities can be between 50 to 100 centimeters per second. The waveform has sharp peaks and zero to very slow diastolic flow. The resistive index is between 0 0.55 to 0 0.7. No turbulence will be seen in a normal subclavian artery. And here we have a case of subclavian artery stenosis. There is narrowing of the lumen of the subclavian artery. In such cases, the peak systolic velocity will increase. It will be more than 100 centimeters per second. Here it is almost 150 centimeters per second. It is increased. The resistive index will be greater than 0.7. Here we have a case of severe subclavian artery stenosis. The PSV is more than 400 centimeters per second. You can also notice turbulent flow in the artery. Turbulent flow is seen as mixing of colors on color Doppler. Proximal to the stenosis, that is, just before the stenosis, you may find low velocity flow and to and fro flow as well. At this point, the velocity is between 20 and 30 centimeters per second. It is lower than the normal range. And also there is to and fro flow, that is alternating forward and reverse flow. The flow above the baseline is the forward flow and the flow below the baseline is the reverse flow. Subclavian steel syndrome can occur in cases of severe subclavian stenosis or occlusion. What happens is when there is a severe stenosis or occlusion of the subclavian artery, blood flow to that arm is significantly reduced. This can lead to a change in blood flow in the nearby vertebral artery. The vertebral artery will undergo flow reversal which makes it look like blood is stolen from the vertebral artery and that blood goes into the subclavian artery. Hence we have the name subclavian steel syndrome. This is a normal flow in a vertebral artery. There is forward flow. The waveform is above the baseline and over here we have a vertebral artery in the setting of subclavian steel syndrome. There is flow reversal in the vertebral artery due to a severe stenosis in the adjacent subclavian artery. The waveform is seen below the baseline. Thoracic outlet syndrome refers to compression of the blood vessels and nerves in the space between the collarbone, that is the clavicle, and the first rib. Subclavian artery can be compressed in such cases. It usually occurs in setting of trauma or injuries. Doing certain activities with the arms 
may cause compression of the subclavian artery in a person with thoracic outlet syndrome. At rest, the subclavian artery will be normal, but when the arm is raised during the examination, the arm is abducted 45 degrees above the shoulder. Increased PSV was detected on spectral Doppler, which is indicating stenosis of the artery due to compression. The artery may be compressed by a nearby muscle or in patients that have an extra rib. So when the arm is abducted above the shoulder, we have very high velocities. They are above 500 centimeters per second. Here is another case of thoracic outlet syndrome. When the patient is at rest and the arm is in its normal position, the waveform will be normal. But when the arm is abducted 45 degrees above the shoulder, no flow is detected on spectral Doppler. The artery is completely compressed and shows occlusion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.